So breast cancer continues to be uh, the number one cancer in women after the skin cancer. Um, there is an expected 310,000 plus new diagnosis of breast cancer in 2024. We're also seeing an increase in incidence year after year. It's about 0.5%. We're also seeing an increase in the younger patients with, at the 1% rate or so. So we are seeing younger patients than we used to. The average age for a woman to be diagnosed with breast cancer is about 62, 63. That means that half of the people are younger and half are older. In younger patients, breast cancer tends to be more aggressive, more advanced, and require probably a multimodality treatment more than not. So there is a lot that we can do about that. In general, the risk of developing breast cancer, it's one in eight in a lifetime. That's the average risk. Now it's very important that women know their individual risk. The risk is influenced by your family history and your personal history. Knowing the risk factors and knowing your own risk allows you to really be followed the right way, the way that is right for you. And we are moving closer and closer to really practicing personalized care for every patient that comes to our door. When I said the average risk is one in eight, a woman that has two family members, first degree relatives, she has a three times higher risk of developing breast cancer. Starting the mammogram at age 40 is right for those that are at average risk. However, for individuals that are increased risk, 40 could be too late, could be 10 years later than you should. So knowing your own risk factors, knowing your family history, knowing your personal history will allow you to really do what's right for you. Even though unlikely, breast cancer can happen very early on in life. Having breast cancer in your 30s is unlikely. It's about 0.4%. So about 40 in a thousand will get breast cancer in their 30s. As you move to the 40s, it's about 1.5%. So it's still a low risk of developing breast cancer in those young ages of life. However, that's the population that doesn't get mammograms, doesn't get screened, and we not always advocate for self-breast examination. Guidelines have changed with the fear of causing too much anxiety. We sometimes say, you know, breast self-examination potentially could increase too much of the anxiety for the return it gives us back. I recommend that everybody knows their body and everybody knows what's their breast feeling like before their period, after the period. And then if you do a cell breast examination, just pick about 10 days after your period and know how your breasts feel like. You will know if something is new there. And I do recommend that you just don't ignore it. The majority of women that present with breast cancer before age 40, they come because they identify the mass themselves or their physician doing a breast exam. So filling the lump and having you checked can save your life. And I recommend that you continue to do so. When do you have your first child? Before age 30 or after age 30? Before age 30 is protective. After age 30 is actually increasing the risk. How many kids do you have? How many pregnancies have you had? How long do you breastfeed? How long do you go for hormone replacement therapy? How much do you drink? You shouldn't. How much do you smoke? You shouldn't. How much do you exercise? You should. That's about 150 minutes moderate to high intensity exercise a week, plus a good diet. Can keep not only breast cancer away, but multiple other cancers. Keeping your weight down, not eating the American plates. I'm really trying to change that habit and change that culture. And really knowing your family history and knowing your genetic makeover. We have access now to really have genetic testing, which is either through a swab of your you know, mucosa in your mouth or with a saliva sample or with a blood sample. And the cost has got down significantly. It's about 250 if you want to just self-pay. Um, if you identify yourself as a carrier of a pathogenic genetic mutation, and you may have heard about the BRCA1, the BRCA2. We have so many other genes now that we can blame cancer in a family for. 
So I'll give an example. There is families that there, there are families that have tested for the BRCA in the past because there's so much cancer. And in a way, they're reassured that they found no BRCA gene there. However, we offered them new gene panels and we were able to identify different genes. For example, the POD2 gene. That's almost like a BRCA2 gene, but if you just test for BRCA, you won't find it. And that's also increasing the risk of not only breast cancer, but other cancers. I will say one more thing, that by doing a genetic testing, you not only gift yourself with the knowledge that you gain, but you gift your family, and you're able to protect their life by offering them the information regarding their own risk. If they have a genetic mutation and they haven't completed their families, they actually can decide to stop the passing on that gene to the next generation by using assisted reproductive fertility options, which now they are available.